Thursday stunner in Spokane. The Zeds have made their way to Stockton. The fans are expected to fill the Spanos Center. The Pacific Tigers hope to party all night long while Gonzaga looks to bounce back and flex its conference muscle. And they'll need to do that to keep pace with St. Mary's. Can we take a look at the updated West Coast Conference standing? St. Mary's going to win this evening against Santa Clara. Well, uh, Mary Mount, of course, still feeling very good about what they pulled off against the Zags in the kennel on Thursday. Great to have you with us, everyone, with Richard Fox. I'm Tom Glasgow, and I think, Richard, the big question is, how will the Zags respond tonight to that rare home loss? They haven't, they haven't had a lot of time to try to process what happened just a couple of nights ago. I, I think at the end of the day, you just have to move on. Obviously, a lot was at stake. A lot of streaks ended that night. It's time to start some new streaks here against the Pacific. Some very impressive streaks coming to an end on Thursday. These certainly should not be taken for granted. They speak to the quality of this program, the duration of success, 93 straight wins against unranked teams, 75 straight inside the McCarthy Athletic Center to some of the very impressive numbers. Yeah, look, LMU first win in Spokane, I think, since 1991. So a lot of things were broken on Thursday night, but Gonzaga's got a chance tonight on the road to kind of restart a little bit. Speaking of the road, back out on it after those three straight road games, won by a grand total of eight points against USF, Santa Clara, and BYU. Serious nail-biting going look, Drew Timmy in the non-conference is really the show for Gonzaga. It's been some of the others against San Francisco. Bolton came up, clutched down the stretch, 11 points, and then Pierre Hickman, broken play, finds a way to get his shot off, knocks down the three-point shot, eight points in the last... 8.43 of that ball game and against, against BYU, a really difficult physical game, throughout their year at the end of the ball game off of the Drew Timmy screen, knocks down the clutch three point shot, he ended up with six points down the stretch for Gonzaga. Three very difficult wins on the road, I'd expect it to be tough tonight as well. Well, the Tigers, like the Lions, look to roar, while the Zags want to make a statement in Stockton. The starting lineups and opening tip-off are on the way. Stockton in California. It's a gorgeous day today as you see some of the fans arriving. The West Coast Conference action on this Saturday night. The Tiger fired up. Fans are as well with sixth rated Gonzaga in town. 
Tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. Pay bills, deposit checks, and access your accounts 24-7 with digital banking at Numerica Credit Union. For Gonzaga, the starting lineup since game one. Strother, Timmy, Hickman, Watson, and Bolton. Meanwhile, for the Pacific Tigers tonight, they roll out their 11th different starting lineup in just their 22nd game. Keelan Boone, their leading scorer, at just under 12 points per game. Leonard Perry, the head coach of the Pacific Tigers' second season, is head coach, former head coach at the University of Idaho. His record with the Tigers, 18 and 33. And Mark Hugh, of course, in his 24th season and leading the Zags. Speaking of streaks as we were earlier, he has an 18-game winning streak without a loss in matchups against Pacific. Well, tonight's keys to the game are brought to you by Northern Quest. And Richard, look, for Gonzaga to play every time, right? Yeah, we've been kind of consistent in principles of the game, but for Gonzaga to value the ball, Pacific still in the conference, forcing 14 turnovers. We've got to guard the three-point line. Pacific does a really nice job knocking down those front of shots. And for Pacific, this is a team that's struggled on the glass all year. They've got to have a collective approach. Gonzaga's given up 11 offensive rebounds a game. There may be some opportunity for second chance points and then anybody but Timmy for someone other than the All-American to beat you. We've seen Gonzaga's burner players in particular struggle with some, with some inconsistency. And it will be interesting early on in this game to see how an undersized Pacific team will decide how to defend Drew Timmy in the post. Will they bring a double? Will they just go one versus one and see how that plays out? We'll have uh, an answer in short order. You see Gonzaga leading the series 20 to 1. And they hope to make it 21 to 1 in course tonight. Look at the students who have made their way in for this one. Our officials tonight, Scott Brown, Mark A. Beasley, and Randy McCall. Virginia looking to bounce back from an off night for him against LMU. And you know as competitive as he is, Richard, that'll be certainly lighting a fire under Drew tonight. Well, look, since the San Francisco game where he struggled quite a bit, he's been great. He's consistent, 18, 19 points a game, seven rebounds, but the field goal percentage sub-51%. For a guy we're accustomed to seeing making those shots at over 60%, but you just know at some point the dam's going to break and he's going to have one of those nights. Averaging 21.3 points per game, 11th best. In the NCAA, and the field goal percentage this season, just over 60% tops. They're actually fourth in the uh, tops in the WCC. So we are underway. It's Mo Odom running the show offensively at point, a true freshman of the Bronx, New York. Terry told me earlier today that he made great strides this season in terms of his development. Man to man defensively. And Odom from downtown. Hickman with the rebound. Watson with some room in the paint. Coming up short. And lays it in. Nice job by Anton Watson sticking with it. Yeah, you see right away the challenge for City's going to have. You know, Keelan Boots at 6'8, their biggest player on the floor. Just not a lot of size for the Tigers. Inside, boom! Nice pass for Donovan Williams, who moved into the starting lineup this evening for the injured Greg Allah. He's out tonight with a shoulder injury, suffered Thursday at San Francisco. A nice cut to the hoop by Timmy to make it 4 2 Zags. Quick pick and roll there between those two, and Pippen delivers it on the money. The top shooter in this conference percentage-wise, Luke Abdolovich comes in hitting nearly 57% of the shots from downtown. Timmy offline. Watson got it back. Another opportunity and another three-point try by Watson. Maybe. The Pacific's going to give those two that shot. They don't want to break down their defense in the paint. They'll let Gonzaga's bigs shoot the three-pointer. Judson Martindale, a recent addition to the starting lineup. And Pacific with the early 8-4 lead. And defending. 
Watson kicks it over. Strother a little strong on his three ball. Watson inside will head to the line. Good penetration here from Odom. Keeps his head up and you just see the ability of Pacific to knock down the three point shot. Just an interesting game here. Kind of countering styles. Pacific undersized, wants to spread you out. They'll really it's feast or famine for them from three versus Gonzaga. A little bit more traditional with what they have up front. So far, you've seen Gonzaga's sides up front really lead to an advantage. Three offensive rebounds, but Pacific able to knock down those threes. Nice early sign at the line for Anton Watson, who gets 55.6% of his free throws. Williams. Trying to take advantage of the quickness line. Timian does. Nice strong move by Donovan Williams. Wilkins trying to get his shot off. Can't. Timmy does a nice job sealing off Boone and lays it in and one. And high low action. Gonzaga has been doing that for 20 years, and I don't know if they've ever had a pair of Watson and Timmy who've been better at it. Just Watson knows exactly where to throw it. And Timmy does such a nice job of not releasing before the ball gets over his head. So often you see Biggs, the moment the pass is in the air, start releasing that contact, let the defense get in the way to make a play on the ball. Well, Boone's beat the moment the ball hits Watson's hands. 8-10 Pacific. Tigers making four of their first five shots. Loading to the draw. Cut off nicely by Timmy. Boom. Open from downtown. Rattles it in for three. Keelan Boone. It's just under 37% from beyond the arc. We've got a little delay here as Timmy lost his shoe there trying to keep him in front. Getting in the front court. Oh, nice drive as he blew past. Abdolovich. Inside. Martindale rejected, but fouled by Hickman. One of the points of emphasis for Mark Few today at shoot around was defensive effort from his guys, especially when they're closing out on shooters. So, that's the thing to keep an eye on. Here so much season. of what goes into that, this side of the ball defensively is talking, communicating, letting each other know what you're doing. It's not enough just to all understand, hey, the game plan on a pick and roll is to do ABC. I've got to talk to my teammate and let them know what's going on. I think against LMU we saw a breakdown of that a bit at Pacific here to start the game and, re and really look to attack and zag it in that pick and roll offense. Number 15, Sam Freeman has checked in for Pacific. Boone went to the Tigers bench. Hickman fouled. He'll go to the line. So that will go against Mo Odom. It will be starting this one for the Tigers. Second personal foul on Odom. So he's got to be careful. He may be coming out right now and he does Tyler Beard replacing him number three Again, number 21, and not giving him too much space beyond the arc. He's trying to create some room against Strider. Goes with the left hand, no good. 
Good defense that time by Strano. Yeah, Williams, is big, big, <laughs> Williams is a big kid. 6'5", 200, good defense from Strother. We've got a game here early. Pacific, up three. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you guys to go back to your seats and get ready for the seat.
Pacific, 22, Gonzaga, 20, 11.50. Remaining in the first half here at the Spano Center on the campus of the University of Pacific is Mark Hugh. As his guys gathered around, and you know, we talked about how would they respond to what went down against Loyola Marymount on Thursday, and they find themselves in another tight road contest. Anton Watson heading to the line to shoot two, has four points. That's a six rebounds for those offensive time. That's been impressive for Watson. Well, tonight's fan tribute question is brought to you by Arby's, your delicious neighborhood meat craft. We stopped by Arby's today. Arby's, we have the meats. The question, how many times has Gonzaga won WCC Player of the Year. How many times has a Zags player? Really? Yeah. Text your answer to 83200. That's where I was going, but watching one of two at the line. Jordan Ivy Curry is checking in. Lost the ball. The beard got it back. Found some room for that little floater inside. Greg with the rebound. After a good start for Pacific, the offense is starting to bog down. Nearly another turnover there. Greg goes hard, lays it in. Nicely done off the pass from Smith. Yeah, first possession of the game. It was hit to Timmy. There you see Smith to Greg. A good delivery on the pass, and you see the strengths Greg has added this year to finish to the contact. Last leg's lead was at 4-2. Ivy Curry wide open. Real strong. Greg with the board. Already making an impact on the defensive glass. Smith. Tough pass there. Stolen by Beard. On the push. Blake. For three. Nick Blake. Averages just over eight per game. Yeah, he shoots it at 35 for three. Watson played soft there. Just let him step into an open three as Blake gets caught for the foul here, trying to get over that screen from Greg. Transition. You know, Blake's expecting a little more pressure. Watson just lets him have it. He's too good a shooter to let him do that. Tigers five for five from three-point range. It's hard. You know, Blake coming in, into tonight two of nine from three, so you think he's not feeling it from there, but on the year. 35 from the three-point line. The last foul was on Blake. Timmy inside. Going to work on Freeman. Couldn't finish. I think he might have gotten hit there. Blake rejected by Timmy. Drew here moving his feet. Stays in it. Great block. Adolovich fouled, he'll shoot three, and Mark Hughes just rubs his head. What are we doing? Abdolovich. Nice little curl action there uh, out of the out of bounds. And Smith, you have to allow the shooter to land. He takes him out at the legs. That's a good call from the official. Now on Smith, his first. Blake out. Elon Boone returns. Four point lead for Pacific. Greg setting the pick for Strother. And he does the same for Smith, gets it back. And he'll go to work one on one with Freeman. So no double team there, and Timmy makes him pay. And a 
Boots violation. Boots steps over the line. That's Ben Gregg kind of waiting, waiting there to just try to step into the inbounds pass. Crafty play there from Ben. And just another careless turnover for Pacific. They've been good when they've taken care of the ball. They've gotten the shots that they've wanted. Double coming his way yet, still not, and he draws the foul against Freeman. Yeah, and I, I don't know how long you can stay with that kind of diet defensively where you don't offer any help to Drew Timmy. He's just too good. We, we had the game earlier this year up at the kennel where Pepperdine chose for effectively 40 minutes not to double him. He had 35, and he's either going to score or get himself to the line. This is such a good job of drawing fouls. You're now two of four at the line. She looks to draw the Zags into a tie with 9.36 remaining in the first half here in Stockton. Smith with a rebound. Strother pull up at the foul line. Cleared into front court for the Tigers. Boone looking over to his head coach, Leonard Perry, to get the play. Beard with room as Timmy backed off a little bit. And it'll be Zag's ball. And hey, look, Boone misses the shot, but. If you're Hickman, you've got to get away from that screen quicker because you, what you're doing is you're putting Drew in a difficult position. You know, he, he only can stay home with your guys so long. He has to roll back to the screen. Smith, little hesitation, got himself in trouble on the baseline. And foul. Go against Greg. Timmy talking to Smith right now and saying, look, you've got to take that shot. I'm carving out that space for you. Both Timmy and Watson are so good at doing that. If they don't get the post feed and you drive towards them, they're going to find a way to carve out some space, at least occupy the man that's defending them, which is typically a shot blocker. First foul on Greg, third team foul on Gonzaga. Hunter Salas checking in for the first time. Boom. Air ball in three-point range. And a foul underneath. Goes against Hunter Salas. Those are always the hardest rebounds to get those air balls. Yeah. You're anticipating it hitting the rim at minimum. And Hunter there just got a wrong place, rather wrong spot on the floor and just picks up a cheap one. Guarded by Salas. Good job by Timmy preventing Abdolovich from getting the ball for a three point shot. Zags knock it out. Five seconds on the shot clock. Eight nineteen left here in the first half. Boone over Timmy. Oh, my. Keelan Boone. That was tougher than the one he airballed. Yeah, he was obviously. Just shake his hand. That's a great shot. Bolton with a response. Regier Bolton with his first three tonight. And the Zags back within one. That's the one thing about this Zaga team. Maybe not as dominant as they've been, but they're tested. And they don't panic in these situations on the road. Seven his beard goes to work and to push off and create some room against I think it was Hickman. He got that one to go off the glass. Bolton looking for back to back threes. Andy Curry with the board and the push. A 
Johnson ahead. Bolton lays it up. And too strong. Timmy with the follow. And it'll be Zag's ball. And Keelan Boone, the only Pacific Tiger who scores on average in double figures. Here's one reason why is he dropped at that contested three. down to three against Pacific 708 remaining in the first half time for our Arby's trivia trivia answer. You said you thought you knew the answer. I thought it was 19. And look at, look at that. Did you see when that was passed my I way? Did, no, I, I promise you I did. 19 um, is the correct answer. Of course, that speaks to the fact when you have a successful program. That's part of what that award is all about. Can uh, you name the only two top winners in Tiger history? Adam Morrison. No. I said it with conviction. Yeah, I know. Had I not known the answer, I would have believed you. The answer Blake is? Step. All right. Yeah. Well, Gonzaga, Thursday night against LMU, as you know, you saw it firsthand struggling from beyond the arc in that game, 4-14, and unfortunately that trend has continued so far, just with one of seven. And a made three by Gordon. Meanwhile, Pacific has made six of eight from downtown. Three of those attempts have been by Watson and Timmy, so yeah, they just, just need to show a little more patience on this end. Don't settle for those threes. Shot clock winding down. He had to launch that one. And shot clock violation did not draw iron. But nothing drives you more crazy as a coach than out of the timeout, you have a shot clock violation. Yeah. You need, you've got to be aware of what is on that clock and what you can do. 30 seconds right. talking about what we're trying to do. Here inside, force is one up. Watson in the front court. 6.30 remaining in the half. And he guarded by Martindale. Dolovich kind of flashing a little bit in the low post. Drew goes up, a little jump hook, knocks it down. Yeah, you can just count on it, either a yeah. foul or a bucket if you're not going to double him. And Martindale just doesn't have the size or strength to bother Timmy at all. Drew with eight points. Nice. Quick response by the Tigers yeah. going up 34-31. Nice jump shot there on the baseline. Yeah. Boone, first player in the game, into double figures with 10. Strother returning for the Zags. Bolton heads to the bench. Oh, excuse me, Drew Timmy also with 10 points. Strother for three, second made three. Yeah, Williams, Williams got caught in the wash there a bit. Just a lot of bodies to try to work through. 
Strother steps into an open shot. Abdolovich. Well, that's a wide open look for him that you don't want to yeah, surrender. But you, you love the offense if you're if you're Pacific. Yeah. You know, on the initial side, you get a curl. Good, unselfish plays. Pass, pass leads to a wide open three in the corner from your best shooter. We'll take that every time now. Hickman with a step back three. Rebound the push. He's going to go strong. And Hickman who gets the rejection. Strother on the push. Pull up three. Long rebound. Martindale has it. Finds Abdolovich. Bounce pass. Beer reversal. Brings the crowd to life. What a pass from Mikalovic. My goodness. Cross court, low bounce pass. Jimmy spins right in some trouble. Watson with the follow. And he'll head to the line. Great action here in the first half in Stockton. Look at this pass. This is a great angle on it, too. Cross court. Keeps it low and just... To Crafty finish at the rim from Beard. Watson, three of four. Tie game. Shoots at 43% from three, so you can't sag off and try to choke down the drive. You've got to honor the three point shot. Beard, you see his quickness there. First foul on Drew, 15 foul. Arm ball cut off by Salas, who hits the deck. And a timeout taken by Leonard Perry. Saw Martindale down on the deck. Got the time out with 4.08 remaining in the first half.
home today to TCU, 83 to 60. UCLA losing at number 11 Arizona, 58 to 52. So a nice win for Tommy Lloyd's team. Yeah, Arizona was giving away at the end. They used to lay with great down the stretch. Look, this is the nature of college basketball this season. And it may be this way moving forward for a period of time, just given the, the, the level the level of movement, roster changes. Uh, it's just difficult to maintain it throughout the course of a whole year. You're getting someone's going to get you at some point. Both of these teams shooting 12 of 25. Ivy Curry trying to get to the rack, and he's fouled on his way. Anton Watson. His first personal, 16 foul. There's a discussion whether that was on the drive or on the shot. Here you see the drive. Yeah, if it's on anybody, or, I think it's Strother if it's anybody. You just see Pacific. We saw this here the night time against LMU. It's just that dribble penetration. If you can't keep the guy in front, as they do confirm it's on Strother, you can't keep the guy in front. He just breaks down your defense and forces these rotations. Gonzaga's had a tough time here. Uh, in you know, the last week or two of just maintaining that initial line of defense on the perimeter. Andy Curry guarded by Salas. Donovan Williams with the ball. Who, like Salas, is a former Mr. Nebraska player of the year? Blake. No good. Good contest. Tough shot to play. Tags looking for the lead in this tie game. Strother, tough shot, got the roll, nicely done, Julian Strother. I, I, I think most folks, when they think of Strother, think about his three-point shooting, but when he puts his mind to it, he's really effective attacking the basket. Seven points for him. Tags with a two-point lead. Inside, Blake going hard to the rack. Second foul on Nolan Hickman. Tigers into the bonus. Two shots coming up here for Nick Blake, who shoots 72% at the line. Blake, one of the transfers we talked about earlier. He came over from UNLV his freshman year, had 10 starts for the Rebels, averaged six and a half points per game. Yeah, he's been good tonight. Four points, trying to get his fifth here. He has strong the last four games, only five points a game, but back on New Year's Eve against LMU had 23, so he's a guy who can score it. Timmy, and that quick spin, too quick, called for travel. Just the third turnover against yeah. the Zags. But Mardell does a nice job there of pushing Timmy out onto the floor versus giving up that position closer to the basket. Martin now. Abdominich. Martin has some room baseline. Goes up strong. Can finish. Keeps it alive. Knocked away. Curry rolls out of bounds and be Gonzaga ball. Well, this game is physical. Yep. A lot of contact there on the drive initially for Martindale. Here on the loose ball. No whistle. You know, we think as long as it continues to stay close, it will get more physical along the way. Timmy goes to work again against Martindale. This time. Put that left arm down as Drew went up, so he'll shoot a couple. And it's, that's what makes Timmy so difficult, is he does bring the ball out. He's baiting you defensively. You see the ball instinctually. You want to bring your arm down and try to swipe at it. 
It takes a lot of discipline defensively against Timmy. You just have to keep your arms up. Don't let him bait you in that foul. If he knocks down shots over you, you have to live with that. But it's these fouls. It's not just getting Timmy in the line himself, but he just puts so much foul pressure on you as a team. First foul on Martindale. Puts the Zags back up. All movement by the Tigers here in the first half. Blake over Timmy. It's going to be well short. Strother for three. Nothing but net for Julian Strider and the Zags up by four. Yeah, this is the danger zone for the Tigers. You've got you've done an excellent job this first 19 plus minutes. You can't let it get away. Don't let Gonzaga go on a spurt here to end the half. Largest lead for Gonzaga. Williams with a kick out to Ivy Curry who goes left hand over shells and one. Nice job by Jordan Ivy Curry, another transfer from University of Texas San Antonio. Well, it's a long closeout for Salas. Does a decent job challenging. I'm not sure that's a foul. I mean, a little contact there, but stays straight up. And get the Tigers will take it. Ivy Curry averages just over nine points per game. Yet, if you guys right around nine, eight. Yeah, it's, course, pretty, it's the right only now. Boone into double figures. <laughs> spread right? out pretty evenly. Yeah. Nobody's a a big time score, but they all do uh, enough on their own. Three point play pulls Pacific back within one. Strother. Oh, nice spin move that time as Drew puts it home and one. Foul call is the guy Richards, Richard freshman, got exposed against the All-American. This is so good at just baiting you here. A little pick and roll, you don't see that all that often in college, and he just spins off, and you're already beat there. You're not going to block that shot if you're Richards. Richards the biggest player on this Pacific roster at 6'10". Abdolovich drives in get back. Don't know where he is at all times. And if you're Gonzaga, you just can't allow that to happen off of a made free throw. 45-44, Gonzaga inside a minute left here in the first half. Watson trying to get something going against Richards. Can't. Ivy Curry. Martindale from way downtown. Nelson Martindale puts Pacific up 47 45. The fans starting to come to their feet here at the Spanish Center's head coach, Leonard Perry, encouraging them to do so. Bolton gets the pick. Lost the ball, puts it back, fade away, and hits it. To the displeasure of about 6,000 <laughs> Pacific fans, we head to halftime, tied at 47. Not exactly how they drew it up, Richard. No, he, he's, he's trying, I think, to pass it back to Timmy, loses his handle, but stays in the play. That's a really difficult shot on the baseline, and we've got ourselves quite the game here, Tom. Once again... On the road, plenty of drama here in Stockton. Now the Tigers have to feel very good about what they have accomplished in this first half, coming off a blowout loss at San Francisco. Meanwhile, the Zags have to brace themselves for what could be another challenging second half. On the road, we are top 47.
47 at the Spanos Center in Stockton, California. University of Pacific, Gonzaga Bulldogs tied at 47. Gonzaga offensively being led, no surprise, by Drew Timmy with 14 points coming off a 17-point game Thursday, but I think he'd be the first to say it was a subpar right. offensive night for him. So he bounces back nicely, 5 of 9 shooting from the floor. Yeah, you're not going to hold Drew Timmy down, down for long. He's just too talented. And tonight we've seen his ability around the basket. You know, interestingly, Pacific not electing to really provide any other resistance other than the initial defender. It's allowed Timmy to take his time. Five of nine from the field. He's five of seven inside the arc. He's taken a, he took a couple threes early, abandoned that idea, and just got to work on the low block. You see no double team. Can take his time. That's an automatic two points for him. The high low is something that Zach has done for 20 plus years. Watson on the money. And here you see the freshman Richard trying to hold him back in that spin move. It's just something that you just can't guard. He's drawn five fouls, says Timmy. That's how good he is. I'll be interested to see in the second half if the Tigers decide to throw a double there. I was going to ask you, how have they done from what they would find acceptable not double teaming Drew? Well, look, you're in the game. Live with what they're doing. Yeah, you're in the game offensively. You're happy. I mean, you're, both teams are shooting 45 percent from the field. You're getting the shots you want offensively for Pacific. But look, down the stretch, it's going to be about slowing Timmy down. You have to have somebody else beat you. You know the guy who's an All-American can do that. Can somebody else for Gonzaga do that down the stretch? Interesting. No rebounds for Drew Timmy in the first half. Well, which he, he spent I, so much I, time on the, on the perimeter defending. Yeah. How did the other guys have stepped up and uh, picked up those rebounds? I expect him to be a little busier on the glass in the second half in this tie game in Stockton. Gonzaga Halftime Report is brought to you by Coeur d'Alene Casino. Join us at Coeur d'Alene Casino for a mouth-watering steak dinner, pampering spa treatment, or the hottest games around. Coeur d'Alene Casino. Gonzaga Halftime Report is brought to you by Coeur d'Alene Casino. Join us at Coeur d'Alene Casino for a mouth-watering steak dinner, pampering spa treatment, or the hottest games around. Coeur d'Alene Casino, a proud sponsor of Gonzaga Athletics. Coeur d'Alene Casino, welcome home. Big Simon Says contest yeah, I'm a out at midcourt. Yeah. Started with about 50 people, now they're down to the final two. 
All right, let's, uh, let's talk about some other good action here in the first half of this tie game, Richard. And for Pacific, doing some serious damage from beyond the arc. They made 8 of 12 shots. Luke Abdolovich leading the way. He made three of four. Well, we do come in into tonight. This is the one area of strength for the Tigers is the three-point shot. They're eight of 12. And it's just it's been a variety of guys, but it's been the ball movement. A lot of it's come off of either drill penetration or here you see in transition. Nobody steps up. Boone knocks it down. And it's, you know, this is the ultimate equalizer in college basketball, the three-point shot. Quite frankly, basketball generally you know, if you can knock down a three-point shot, you're really never out of any game. All right, so Pacific does most of its damage outside. The Zags doing a lot of damage inside, outscoring Pacific in the paint 20 to 14. Yeah, and again, kind of what we expected. Pacific doesn't have a lot of size inside, can't offer a lot of resistance, especially if you're not going to double through Timmy. And as a result, it's at 12 of 19 inside the arc while they're 4 of 14 from the three-point line. And when they've been patient offensively, they've gotten about anything they wanted around the rim. It's not just Timmy either. We've seen it. Strother do a nice job attacking the basket. Bolton doing the same thing. So if they're just patient, Gonzaga's been able to have a lot of success inside the arc. There's some success right there from number two, Drew Timmy. Again, leading the Zags with 14 points. As we take a look at the stats from the first half field goal percentage, identical. You see that advantage from downtown for the Tigers. A five rebound advantage for the Zags. We certainly want to build on that. Points in the paint we talked about. Bench points. 14 to 5 advantage for Pacific. Tigers do a nice job with their scoring off the bench. 47 47 at the break in Stockton. First 20 minutes tight and exciting. We expect more of the same in the second half. Gonzaga at Pacific tied at 47. The second half just ahead.
Second half about to begin with the Zags and Pacific Tide at 47. Some individual numbers to uh, pass your way. Judson Martindale, nice first half. Richard uh, for Pacific, 10 points, three rebounds for the Zags. Anton Watson, seven points, nine rebounds. Schroeder had 10 points, and of course, from Timmy leading the way with 14 as we are underway here in the second half. And maybe a clock issue right out of the game. I think so. Starting five. Nice pass by Timmy inside to Watson. The center looked to be in the soft zone there, and Gonzaga just carves it up. Nine points for Anton Watson to go along with those nine boards. Zags up by two. Oh, and the true freshman. Martin gets step back, long range. Rebound number 10 for Watson. He's a point away from a double double. To the inside, stronger than Boone and makes him pay. Yeah, just, uh, Boone just can't offer any any resistance. Just a simple pack down there for Timmy. 16 for Drew. Tags up by four, matching their largest lead. Backdoor cut, Martindale, good defense yeah. at the rim by Hickman. Good back cut there for Martindale, just unable to finish. Hickman gets back in the play and bothers his layup attempt. And again, no double. Sizing up Boone. Lays it in. And until they find a way to stop it, yeah, I can feed them. I could call the plays if, if for Gonzaga. <laughs> Just we're going to find Drew on the low block. And you see a timeout here for Pacific. I think trying to get a bit more organized offensively and maybe chat about what they're going to do here yeah. defensively against Timmy. Four quick points here in the second half for Drew Timmy. He's up to 18, and the Zags are up by six. with a 6-0 run to open the second half and lead by 6, 53-47 here at the University of Pacific as Drew Timmy continues his move in terms of all-time field goals made at Gonzaga. Yeah, just two away from Jim McPhee. And I know Jim a bit. How's Jim feel about this game? Yeah, that's a good question. That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm hoping his buddies uh, Rob Burnett, Brian Wurst, Ryan McGowan at the firm... Uh, Jim's been a very successful attorney at uh, uh, Now, I don't think there's anything legally he can do about this. Who's going to yeah. pass him yeah. in the next few minutes? With a few brassic McPhee, I think they all should get a nice bottle of something uh, when the record's finally broken. And here's Boone, fadeaway over Watson, no good, and Timmy with a rebound. That was out of board in the first half. Watch 
Martindale. Guarding Timmy, who had taken Boone to task here early in the second half. I wasn't sure if that was a double team or just trying a different guy on him, but we'll find out soon enough. Boone's back on him. Pickman cut off. Finds Timmy inside to fake and lays it in. Through Timmy up to 20 points. This is really easy right now for Drew. Zags lead up to eight. And a 10 0 run dating back to Bolton's fadeaway to end the first half. Timmy with a defensive gem right there on Abdulovich. Pickman lost it going up. It'll be Gonzaga ball. We're doing a little bit of everything well, here look, in the first two plus minutes. We've highlighted the position that he's been put in tonight, and we've seen that here in the league in particular a lot, and having to defend you know, on an island, on the perimeter, or putting a lot of pick and rolls. He's a much better defender than he was last year, and I, and I think a bit of an underrated defender, and you saw that there. Uh, he's to work on Freeman and lays it in. Look, you, you have to double you know, ideally, he catches it further out, but when he gets into his, you got to either pick on the catch, when he gets into his move, whatever the case might be, he's just too good. I mean, he, he put up 35 on Pepperdine when they elected not to double him in the league opener uh, at the end of, at end of the year. Williams drives, trying to get the first bucket this half for Pacific. Legs on a 10 0 run this half. Watching inside to Timmy. 12 0 run. Second all-time in made field goals. Now Drew Timmy as the Zags are up by 12. And Leonard Perry takes a timeout because this thing may be very close to getting out of hand. And they've got to try to come up with something or someone to deal with Drew Timmy. Well, first, I mean, offensively for Pacific, you know, what they did such a nice job of in the first half was the ball was moving. They were swinging the ball from side to side. A lot of high pick and rolls. Really forcing Gonzaga's defense to break down and that led to some open looks here in the, in the start of the second half It's been a lot of that one-on-one, -on -one, but not nearly as effective a lot of guys standing around and watching The ball as we see Drew having passed Jim for second all-time behind Frank Burgess And I believe he'll catch up to Frank uh, at some point here in the next two or three weeks Meanwhile Pacific 0 for 4 shooting this half They have issues to deal with both Defensively and offensively that need to be corrected soon well, it, it, it looks like they're the Tigers are pretty committed to not doubling Drew. And, and yeah. Look the logic behind that is You know, he's so good anyway, even if we double him He's either gonna still hurt us or he's now all of a sudden we we've, we've Voluntarily broken down our defense and now we're playing catch-up Let Drew go to work and let's shut everybody else down, but it just hasn't worked here so far tonight Let's see what the Tigers can come up with out of the timeout now they're going with their biggest player is going to be checking in and Makai Richards redshirt freshman at 610 see if that helps Watson with the steal on the overplay nicely done he is so good at that I mean, he's good all over the floor defensively but his, his ability to anticipate those long passes is Bolton turns it over trying to get it inside and Drew. That's a really difficult angle from the top of the key. If you're not throwing over the top, that bounce pass is really hard to deliver. It almost looked like he got a little caught a little between. I'm going to shoot. No, there's right. Drew. Well, yeah. Any coach will tell you, look, just take a second and kick it out to the wing. Yeah. That guy's got a better angle to deliver it into the low block. Right, so Makai Richards has checked in. The Tigers in desperate need of a bucket. This is a guy that can get him one and does. Luke Just a, a better flow there for Pacific. Kind of that dribble weave action up top, forcing Gonzaga's defense to continually move. First miss this half for Gonzaga, but Timmy and one. Ty Richards. Committing the foul. Timmy up to 24 points. And a timeout. 
Here at the Spano Center. Watson, that was too good to pass up. Drew Timmy, the offensive board, the put back, and he'll be heading to the line. Tags on a 14-2 run to open the second half. Tonight's smiles of the game are brought to you by Delta Dental. We're on a mission to help make Washington State 100% cavity-free. To learn more, visit cavityfreewa.com. Brought to you by Delta Dental of Washington. Proud supporters of Healthy Smiles and your Gonzaga Bulldogs. Plenty of smiles on the Zags bench and the Zags fans who are here in the house. They Certainly like what they have seen here over the first four minutes and nine seconds of the second half with Gonzaga tied at the break. Now up by 12 with Rutini on fire this half. 26 for Timmy. 11 of 15 from the field as he misses the free throw. Pacific with just one basket this half from Abdolovich. Foul away from the ball. And Watson on the hold as Boone was coming out to set the ball screen. First personal foul on Anton Watson. And Denson, number 13, is checked in for the Tigers. And they open this game with their 11th different starting lineup this season. Got a contrast to Gonzaga. Abdolovich fades back, can't get a tip by Denson. A good inside position there from Denson. Tags lead, cut to 10. And a few calling out the play. Overplay that time by Denson, who was defending Timmy. That's his ability to push him out. Just more resistance before he catches the ball. Denson just scored and made a nice defensive play. Trying to create on Timmy a little jump hook. So Cam Denson off the bench providing a spark for the Tigers. Within eight. Benson averages just over four points per game and gets the steal. Two on one Tigers. Denson with the left hand lays it in. Cam Denson in his zone right now. And he forces Mark Few to take a timeout. Look at that entire Pacific team come off the bench out onto the court. To show their respect and admiration for what 
Cam Denson's lost right. to the court. You've seen a little bit of everything. Had the offensive rebound on the previous possession there. Takes Timmy one on one and just the activity. He's been so active early defensively, has provided the best you know, presence around Timmy, just physicality in there. You know, gets his hand in, turns over the ball, and knocks down the layup. What a run by Denson on his own. Yeah. A productive 42 seconds with six points, a rebound, and a steal. That was my senior season in high school, by the way. <laughs> it was a good senior season. Hey, you were in back the time you got. <laughs> so the Gonzaga lead, which was in the double figures, now down to six. The Denson effect. Who knew? We know now. Uh, Hickman guarded by Beard. For a backdoor cut there by Hickman. Strong couldn't get it to him. Timmy inside triple teamed briefly. And foul on the pass. Fell on Boone, his third personal. Let's see if I think Leonard Perry's going to hesitate at all to leave him in the game. Jensen, first mistake he's made, got a little too tight on Strother as he commits the foul. First personal on Cam Denson. Sophomore out of Compton, California. Pickman for three. Out of bounds. Pacific ball down by six. 13-44 left to play. And Hickman, just a rough night tonight from the three-point line. 0 of 3. A couple assists, but just a three-point shot not here so far. Four for the Bulldogs, just 4 of 15. And one! Blake on the drive, and he'll head to the line. Strother committing the foul. That's just a quick jab, and that's a blow by. You know, we saw this against LMU. You know, Gonzaga's prayer players either hearing, being communicated that a pick's coming or anticipating it and starting to shade in that direction. And any you know, a good player at this level is going to see that and bait you with the jab step, and then they're going to open it up and go to the rim. That's exactly what we saw there. It's Blake makes kind of converts the three-point play, and Pacific now right back in this game, just down three. On a 9-0 run. Started 0 for 4 from the floor to begin the half since. They've gone 4 and 6, but there's the response from Drew Timmy. It's hard. You set that ball screen. Den Den Denson's playing so far back that when Hickman gets around the screen, he's got all kinds of time and daylight to make a decision. Boone from the corner, no good. Offensive rebound inside. Blake, he'll head to the line. Oh, Nick Blake. Pacific playing some inspired ball right now. The They're last basket by Timmy, by the way, takes him to 28. They're playing super hard on the Tigers. And you see that on every offensive up every, every shot they're attacking the offensive class and Blake hasn't shot it great two of six but now three of three from the free throw line and a good response after struggling the last couple weeks under Perry telling me this morning that one of the issues with his team is when they struggle offensively, it can carry over to the defensive side. Conversely, he said, when we get it going offensively, it feeds our defensive play. Well, now, that doesn't mean they've got an answer yet for this guy looking for 30 points, Drew Timmy. He's so patient there. He lets the defense fly by and just gets it off the glass. His third. 30-point game this season. Boone for three. And Keelan Boone pulls Pacific within two. It's on this end right now. Pacific's finding a way to score. And so is Drew Timmy. 32 points. It's like 
Pacific's playing against Timmy right now with the way he's scoring it. His season high 35, his career high 37, and he's at 32. Boone in trouble and bailed out on a foul call. Intense action here in the second half. A lot of fun here in Stockton. We started the second half wondering which team was going to have that first significant run. It was Gonzaga. And on the precipice of maybe turning this thing into a blowout, the response from the Tigers fueled by Cam Denson off the bench. And Keelan Boone certainly doing his part. 14 points the leading scorer on this team who averages just under 12 per game. Well, I think we know where the ball's going here. Sue Timmy with 18 of Gonzaga's 20 points here in the second half. Pacific on a 15-8 run as Bolton goes to the left hand to push the lead back out to four. Yeah, you might as well give Timmy credit for the bucket, though. Just held, holds off then. Denson as Bolton drives on that left side of the lane. Easy layup. There's Denson spinning on Timmy. Left hand, no good. Watson with the board. Guy Smith cut off. Spins, kicks, Bolton, three, no. Beard with a rebound. Double high post to start this offensive set. Good idea for execution by Blake. Zags in transition. And Watson fouled by Blake. As we get a timeout here in Stockton. Terrific action. In this WCC matchup, Drew Timmy tearing it up in the second half. 18 in the second half for Timmy, up to 32. Keelan Boone doing everything he can to keep the Tigers in it. Hits the three ball for Pacific. Another tight one on the road, up four off the Pacific. 10.54 left to play as we take a look at Gonzaga's upcoming schedule. Brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union, your financial success fan club. Well, February is going to get awfully interesting with the uh, two matchups with St. Mary's. First up at the Kennel on the second. Well, think about it, too. Santa Clara and USF and BYU all gave Gonzaga fits yeah. at their place. Uh, it's certainly a different 
Animal playing up at the kennel, but both all three of those teams are going to have some level of confidence given what they were able to do on their own floor. So this is going to be a grind all year for Gonzaga. How about Drew Tinney, 18 points this half in nine minutes and six seconds. You know, Tom, I don't know much, but I know that's an efficient <laughs> rate of scoring the ball. It is. He's on pace roughly, you know, for 40 points this half, 54 in the game. If it happens, remember where you heard it first. Watson. I will. I will. I will. Hits the free throw. Pacific 12 of 13 from the line. His eggs now 13 of 19. Watson now with a double double as he takes a seat. And Strider returns. So this is who Anton is. He's struggled to score two of seven, but it still finds a way to get to the line. Seven of eight and 12 rebounds. Three of those, I believe, four of those offensive. And the lay in by. Number 12, Jordan Ivy Curry. Pacific back within four. Now it's Boone trying to defend Timmy in the post. Malachi Smith says, don't worry about it. I'll hit the three ball corner pocket. Lead up to seven. Tiger's best three-point shooter by percentage of Smith, over 52%. Six points for Malachi. Ivy Curry over Timmy. Loose ball. Blake inside doing a nice job cleaning things up. Yeah, that's, that's Martindale finding a way to get his fingertips on the ball. Foul on Timmy. I wasn't sure if maybe he had stepped on the sideline and the they, whistle blew. I think they called it for that left arm coming out as Martindale's trying to get around and steal the the entry pass. Second foul on Drew. Strother, good defensive work on Beard. Ivy Curry trying to go to work. He's in some trouble. Kicks it out to Blake. Three ball. And Bolton into front court. Zags up by five. See how Boone's fighting there, just yeah. forcing Timmy out. Denson did the same thing. They've been much better in the last three or four minutes, at least trying to make his catches a little more difficult. And to Timmy. Now they might have made it a little more difficult, but the result the same. Timmy up to 34 points. <laughs> Just as I say that, he catches it right out of the round. He's made 12 of his last 13 shots, 20 points this half alone. Blake to the left hand. Man, he's providing a nice. Spark off the bench as well. He really is. You, you see his size and strength there finishing around over Strop. Yeah. Fouled on his way, and I think he'll get two shots on this. Foul on Beard. First personal. 15 foul on the Tigers. Gonzaga also with five team fouls. And at the line, he shoots 85 percent. And Timmy gets a breather. Probably gonna have to ice the right arm. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I don't anticipate it'll be long. We'd expect after the next media timeout, he'll be back in as both knocks it down. But. For the Tigers, look, you've got 40, 60 seconds here. We're defensively can you string together two stops. I think another issue with the clock. Bolton up to 11 points. Perry, his second season as head coach, seventh year with the program. Worked with Damon Stoudemire while he was in charge here. 8.35 remaining. And let's see if Pacific can do some damage with Timmy on the bench. Blake off his foot. 
Foul call on Strother. Strother over the top of Mardell. Coach, you can't believe it. That's a 50-50 play. Mardell does get there first. Strother lands on top of him, but it's a good another look. Blake just loses it off his foot. And I'm not sure about that one. William continues to plead his case. You see Coach Hughes' reaction to it all. Good for this team, nearly losing it, getting it back. Here's Ivy Curry, blows past Smith for the moment. You, 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 you draw it off that baseline. First 25 seconds, great job defensively for Gonzaga, but just there it breaks down on that drive. Strother, tough shot, little slow. Ivy Curry. Over to Beard. Pacific down by five and a foul. Bolton picks it up. And we get a timeout. Jordan Ivy Curry exploiting Malachi Smith on the baseline to pull Pacific within five. Gonzaga up by five on Pacific here at the Spano Center, Stockton, California. Earlier action around the WCC. Big matchup, St. Mary's remains unbeaten in conference play. Convincing win over Santa Clara, 77-58. Portland at home, blasting Pepperdine by 15. Lorenzo Romar struggling down there with that club. And USF at home, taken down. BYU after a convincing victory on Thursday at home against this Pacific squad, which is hanging tough right now. Drew Timmy returns to the court with 34 points. The last zag, if she, he should get to 40 tonight, the last zag to reach 40 or more. Kyle Wiltshire with 45 in a game here against the Tigers. That's funny. That's a name. Exactly. Back in 2015. Yeah, but you don't hear Kyle's name brought up all that much when, it, when you talk about the great scorers of the program, but he was um, towards the top end of that list. That kid could really fill it up. And special player, Beard, with a free throw right there, cutting the Gonzaga lead to three. Well, you just got to get stops at the Pacific. You're finding ways to score the ball. Hold. Nicely done. Just reading the defense in rhythm from the foul line. Leads back to five. In with 13. Kick over to Blake. Lost it on the way up. Trying to get the handle back and does. Hands it off to Hickman. The 
Timmy screen. Loose ball. Pass touch by Watson. In terms of potential foul issues down the stretch, Salas and Strother with three for Gonzaga. Blake and Boone with three for Pacific. Ivy Curry. Cut off by Bolton. And just worked it one and one and got it to go. Ivy's just a strong body kid. Yeah. Bolton does a good job of bodying him up, cutting him off. And you see the strength there. Still able to get to that little jump hook. Look how far off Timmy and Watson's guys are coming. Oh, Ivy Curry sneaking up on Timmy. Had no idea we, he was coming, but couldn't control the ball. Well, here you see the strength. This is good defense for Bolton. He's just yep. body him up, force him, and just at the end there, just loses sight of him for just a second. A nice little shot in the lane. I think if, if you and I went one-on-one, -on -one, that's how you would abuse me right there. Just I think you'd use your quickness Take me in, bait right. me down. Timmy. Lemus Watson with a follow. Watson's effort on the offensive glass has been unbelievable tonight. Hit five of the first half alone. Watson, 13 points. Ivy Curry left hand. Now he tried to tip. Watson tips it out to Hickman. Yeah, he gets to the rim, but, but you know, that's just one on one. Move the ball at the Pacific. Your offense has led to good looks. Big size advantage inside for Watson over Ivy Curry. Foul inside will go against. Pacific. Well, on Martindale, his second. 16 foul. Abdalovich returns and a very dangerous three point shooter as. Jordan Ivy Curry checks out. He did a nice job while he was in. Strider, his hesitation. Beautiful lay in as he takes it hard to the glass. And we talked about that earlier in the game. He could bring more of that to his offense. He's just really effective attacking the rim. We saw that again. Watson just occupies his defender, so there's no help when Strother gets to the rim. His edge with a little more breathing room up seven. Blake inside, though, cuts it to five. Boy, he's so good. He really extends himself at the rim, which makes it really difficult to bother his shot when he's attacking the basket. Blake with 16. Five minutes remaining. Zags up five. Watson guarded by Martindale. Nice shifty work inside. Watson adding to his double double night now with 15 points to go along with his 13 rebounds. Martindale keeping his team in it. Back within five. The My crowd goodness. explodes. My goodness. Oh, he went to the top floor there. Great finish for Martindale. Strother, no. Watson, no, but fouled on the follow. Well, look, it's just, it's effectively coming down a one on one inside either for Timmy or Watson. And, you know, Martindale is as good as he's been tonight. And we see him just over the top. Great finish. You know, Gonzaga's bigs just, you know, they're, they're not feeling a lot of resistance just because, you know, the effort's there for Pacific, but you're just not big enough, strong enough, or long enough to really bother either Watson or Timmy around the basket. Yeah, and again, on the defensive end, the inability to cut off that baseline. It allowed Martindale to get to the rack. Watson will try to knock this second free throw down. And this might be your best defense if you're Pacific. It's just don't let Timmy or Watson have anything easy at the rim, given both of them struggle for yes. the free throw line. Great point. You see the free throw shooting tonight. Beard is offline. 
And that'll be Gonzaga ball. Pacific with 41 points off the bench tonight. 47 points off the bench on Thursday in the loss at San Francisco. We, look, they, they go deep on their bench. Well, Coach Perry, I mean, he'll play nine guys, ten guys. So uh, on any given night, that bench is going to be production. There's as many different starting lineups as they've had. Yeah, guys have cycled in the starters, coming off the bench. And Strother with a big three. Uh, Boone goes under that handoff. Strother knows exactly what to do with it, just steps up for the jump shot behind Watson's screen. Legs up by nine. Boom. They really needed that. Timmy with a rebound. And Pacific desperate for stops now. Strother. Cam Denson has returned. He's guarding Timmy. Five seconds on the shot clock. Timmy banks it wow. in. Look, that's good defense from Denison. He's been the best for Pacific one-on-one -on -one with Timmy. That's just an exceptional player knocking down a tough shot. Season high 36 for Drew Timmy. 22 of those points in the second half. Foul on the Zags. William Strother. You go under. I'm going to take the jump shot. Here, Timmy, good defense, but he finds the glass. Crafty. The Zag is starting to pull away here down the stretch. Zags up 11, 246 left to play. Gonzaga Hoops play of the game it is brought to you by MultiCare Health System. Whether you're at home or in the kennel, MultiCare's team of doctors, nurses, and specialists partner with you all season long. Look, the headline tomorrow is going to be Drew Timmy, but I'd argue Watson's been just as impactful. Just a tremendous effort. Hasn't shot the ball well. Four of ten, but you see his activity level on the last six offensive rebounds of the ball game. Gonzaga with 14 second chance points. Plus 12 on the glass. Watson's been all over both backboards tonight. So with the 11 point lead, the Zags just a point off their largest lead in this game. Good look at Anton Watson. Double double for him. 13 rebounds, 16 points. So I know uh, one of the concerns for Pacific coming in, one of the reasons they decided they didn't want to double team Drew Which Timmy. What Watson could do. Exactly. Yeah. So and we've seen that. They picked their poison. Well, Watson's just, he's so clever away from the ball. He knows how to move without the ball. He, he does a good job of getting position early on the offensive glass. And he's an opportunistic scorer. You know, we saw that at San Francisco, knocked down a couple threes when they really played off of him and Drew was struggling. Watson just has a way of being the guy that they need in that moment. And Anton's dad, Dion, is a former teammate 
with Leonard Perry at Idaho. It's all connected. Let's let's hope Anton's dad gives it a couple yeah. days before he starts sending those texts. <laughs> <laughs> it might come at the final oh. buzzer. How'd my kid do? Uh, let, let your buddy uh, process what happened. Tim Hickman with the ball. For Hickman, you gotta get out of the way here. You're out. There you go. Timmy lays it in. 38 points. There might be a foul call there. Career high for Drew Timmy. 38. Here driving. Smith with the rebound. I wonder if the bench knows he's at 38 and how much might they be motivated Question to try to get him to 40. <laughs> Question is, does Drew with the 12 know? With yes. Does Drew know? Should we let him know? happy to just work some of the clock here. He's going to go for 40 right here. And fouled and may be able to get it accomplished at the line. Such a terrific offensive performance. It's time to announce something here in just a moment. Oh, do you like how I set that up at the team? Uh -huh. That's when the play-by-play -play guy gets a little too excited about uh -huh. the upcoming lead, which starts now. It's time to announce tonight's player of the game presented by A to Z Rental. No job is too big or too small. With eight convenient locations, we rent everything. Let A to Z Rental be your most valuable yeah. player. It was a really hard call, but we ended up deciding it was Drew Timmick. Yep. You score 38, he's probably going to be player of the game. I mean, it's about as well as he's played all year. Just really impressive. And Ivy Curry is going to head to the line. That previous career high for Drew. I think Texas, wasn't it? Yep. At home last year. Pacifics, look, they've played a really solid game tonight. Great contributions off the bench. Yeah, I thought they scored it well. I mean, they averaged 74 a game coming in to tonight. You know, offensively, they've had some tough stretches, but all in all, I mean, they've moved the ball. They've gotten great contributions from their bench, and you know, they've just competed. But, you know, you just see the lack of size that they don't have. What say LMU has up front, which is a true seven footer, a guy in Graham coming off the bench who's really active. Uh, and those guys were able to bother Drew versus tonight, just despite the effort, just not enough length inside. They've been defended by Blake. No five remaining. They need to drive by off the glass. Ivy Curry. Watson harassing him and then fouling him. That's not what he wanted to do. Watson almost comes up with the steal from behind. And then commits the foul on the second reach. So still maybe another opportunity or two for... Drew Timmy to take a crack at 40. Well, let's see if Gonzaga keeps Timmy in the game or takes him out. And we'll take He's him coming out. out. For a little offense, or rather, taking him out for free throw purposes. As Fulton's obviously a better free throw shooter than Timmy. Put more ball handling on the floor as well. Nice ovation for Drew as he takes a seat from the Gonzaga fans and some of the Pacific fans in attendance tonight. And 14 first half points. 24 for Drew in the second half with a total of 38, a new career high. Nice bounce back game for him. Yeah, the frustrations he had uh, on Thursday. You know, he's been consistent. You know, only shooting 51% from the field of the last four games. Still 19 a game and it's really impacting winning for Gonzaga. But this is something we've Gonzaga has become accustomed to seeing, and quite frankly, we have as well, calling as many games as we do. It's just how difficult he is to defend one-on-one, -on -one. and if you give him that look, he's just going to go to work. We saw that tonight. 
Uh, I suspect that field goal percentage will, <laughs> if we averaged out the previous four games of tonight, that's going to bump up probably closer to the 60% field goal percentage average. So, and, and this is the thing about college basketball. We saw this against LMU the other night. You know, when you have a guy, and, and for LMU it was Shelton, obviously for Gonzaga it's Timmy. When you have that type of player where you can run your offense through them and they can get you a good shot or, if needed, create a shot for one of their teammates, you've got a chance to win any game you play. And you're very difficult to beat, and we've seen that tonight, despite the effort from the Pacific. When you've got a guy like Drew Timmy, you're really, really hard to beat. Where he's not going to be happy tonight, as he's two points away from 40, Four of 11 at the free throw line. So that'll that'll grade at him a little bit, I think. But in the big picture, 17 of 23 shooting, uh, leading his team I, to a knee. I'm, a not, I'm not sure he's losing that. sleep tonight based on the free throw. No, <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, oh, it's two away from uh, 40. I'm sure, yeah, yeah. Four of 11. For sure. Ivy Curry with a foul on Malachi Smith. Zags will head back to Spokane right after this one. So the Zags are about to improve their conference record to six and one, a game behind unbeaten St. Mary's. The Gales a convincing win tonight over Santa Clara, 17 and four overall. Up next, next Saturday in Portland to take on the Pilots. Ninety-six, eighty-six. Forty-five seconds left here in Stockton. Nice left that time by Ivy Curry. It's up to fifteen points. And strong bench contribution this evening for Pacific. And they're playing to the end. Oh, they're, yeah, absolutely. I mean, at 42.6, we have. Well, look, I, I, I'm I was, old enough that I've seen Stranger well, Things. I was watching that Arizona UCLA game earlier today uh, at Arizona. Arizona's comfortably ahead with about a minute and a half left. And UCLA puts on a press. I think Arizona had four straight turnovers, so you've got to be good with the ball. You know, you know the, the, the initial trap's going to come. They're going to try to speed you up and try to either steal the ball or steal the pass. Keep your head about you. Make a solid play, and you'll be fine. You're looking maybe for an area where this game was decided. Obviously, you talk about Drew and what he did in the paint with his eggs and outscored Pacific 56 to 36. Drew accounting for 38 of those points. Well, if I'm asked right, Pepper not for probably Pacific here in the second half. One of seven after eight of 12 from the three-point line yeah. in the first half. You know, minus five in the first half on the glass. They kind of let that get away from here in the second half. Okay, now the double team to Strother. Hickman will go the distance and lay it in. 98-88. First made basket tonight for Nolan Hickman. To go along with a couple of free throws. Looking across the court, Coach Hugh yelling out he's not, defensive frustration. He's not going to stop coaching even though you're plus 10 here. But Lesson still to be learned. Over the final 26 seconds. You know, and there's going to be, there's invariably a lot of Zag fans who've grown accustomed to Gonzaga dominating this conference, and that's certainly not been the case here this year. Gonzaga's had to fight through nearly every game, other than that Pepperdine game to start the year. Every game has been contested. But these games have a real impact down the road. Yeah. You know, to, to play in these high-pressure situations, particularly when you get into March, it's just invaluable. You know, it's almost muscle memory. You know, when you don't have to play tense, when you don't have to play in tight moments, and all of a sudden you're asked to do that come March, not everybody's got the ability, not every player has the ability just to turn that switch on. 
And so as hard as it might be at times for Gonzaga here in conference play, I do think there'll be dividends mm -hmm. to that as they get into, into the tournament and the conference tournament as well. Look, all, all teams aren't equal, but we saw progress tonight, right? Game was tied down the stretch. Well, those previous three road games stayed tight. The LMU game Thursday stayed tight. This one, the Zags pushed out. They got themselves into yep. a double-digit lead. Um, so, again, I think something that they can build on is Bolton steps to the line. And Leonard Perry continuing to coach up his guys. Nick Blake with a really strong performance tonight with his 16 points, four rebounds. Abby Curry step back, fadeaway three. Strava with a rebound. I think that's going to do it. Really, really entertaining game tonight. Yeah, a ton of fun. And, you know, a lot of credit to the Tigers. Just think, you know, we caught a lot of these games. They competed as hard as anybody we've seen this year. And credit to Zach and Sue. Look, it is hard to win on the road, and we've seen that here this year. They found a way to pull this one out. Well, Drew Timmy will be the headliner. 38 points, 24 of those coming in the second half as he notches a new career high. But you look at Anton Watson, right, yeah. strong game tonight. Four guys in double digits for Gonzaga. That's the kind of balance you want, even with a guy like Timmy. Going off for 38, you had 15 from Strother, 16 from Watson, and Bolton with a quiet 16. So a nice balanced offensive effort. We wondered how the Zags would respond after the loss on Thursday. Well, they responded very well, led by Drew Timmy. 99 to 90, the Zags win it. Richard, always a pleasure to work with you. Thanks to our great crew. I'm Todd Glasgow. Have a great night.